Hi there, Dr. Beth Westy here, and today we're going to be talking about protein. All things protein, things that are really high in protein and that can help get you feeling fuller, faster, really increase your energy, help you sleep better, and most importantly, help you build lean muscle very, very quickly. Now again, I have talked about um, that muscle weighs more than fat. So as you start really increasing the protein that you're taking in during the day, you may not notice that the scale goes down. You may feel like, um, yeah, my scale is kind of changing, staying the same, but you're losing inches. You're losing inches and that's fantastic because your body composition is changing. So that means that you are actually burning fat tissue in your body and then building lean muscle at the same time. It's sort of magic. Um, and the fastest way to do this is to really just increase your protein throughout the day. So besides protein pacing, which is how you can calculate getting your protein in, one of the most common things then that people ask is, well, what does that look like or how do I do that? Or I think I'm getting protein, but hmm, I'm not really sure how much exactly. Well, here you go. Here are some everyday examples of how to really increase your protein. Now, one of the things that I really wanna focus on is getting to at least this 20 gram mark when you're having a meal or a snack. That's really important because that 20 gram mark, that's the threshold to start building protein muscle synthesis. Why? Every cell in your body uses protein. Protein is used for a lot of energy. And you need to have a certain amount of protein in your system to actually have muscle tissue be built and laid down and repaired and everything. So it's not just about going to the gym. You can go to the gym and lift the heaviest weights, but if you're not fueling your body with enough protein to rebuild that muscle tissue, you're not gonna be able to really build lean muscle. And it's gonna be really tough on your system. So getting at least to that 20 gram mark is essential. So what does that look like? How do you do that? Here we go. Well, a lot of times the most common thing people say, well, I get protein, and you know, I eat a lot of protein. It's okay, well, do you eat eggs in the morning? Yeah, I do. How many eggs do you eat? Well, I eat two, because that's the typical recommendation, right, of how, many, how much protein you should be getting, two eggs, which isn't wrong, but you know, when you're really trying to top load with protein, there's about six grams of protein per, ser per egg. You know, maybe it's seven. You know, you might have a bigger jumbo egg, great but at least six, about six grams of protein per egg. So if you're having two eggs, you're getting 12 grams of protein. A little over halfway there, but not quite there, right? So how do you fix that? You can have two eggs and then, you know, two egg whites. You're definitely gonna hit over that 20 gram mark. Easy peasy. Make it in a fantastic omelet or whatnot. Scrambled eggs, uh, one of my kids' favorites. Um, but that's gonna really get you a lot more protein. Um, four ounces. So these are all whole food options, by the way. Let me re reference that because there are options of, you know, protein powders, protein balls, all that stuff, which I'll, I'll tackle at a different time. Um, but whole food wise, you know, we talk about this four ounce, right? That four ounce serving of, you know, they talk about like a deck of cards at least. Well, look that, but when they talk about a four ounce chicken breast, you're really looking at something that is, you know, also taller, not like a thin, tiny, you know, chicken breast, you're, you're wanting like a substantial, like meaty chicken breast, meaty chicken breast. That's the thing it is now. Okay. So four ounces of chicken breast, that's about 27 grams of protein. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Boom. Right at that 20 mark, uh, four ounces of ground beef, 23 grams. Again, some of this can depend on if it's lean or, you know, the type of ground beef that you purchase. Um, I'm a big fan of grass fed beef. Um, so that's, that's what I purchase personally, uh, four ounces of, and there, and the reason for that I'll mention also is, um, it's higher in CLA, which is conjugate linoleic acid, which actually tells your body to naturally burn more fat too. So win, win four ounces of deli turkey is about, about 24 grams of protein as well. That's a lot of deli turkey though. I mean, <laughs> um, four ounces of salmon, about 20 grams of protein. And then one cup of plain Greek yogurt. Again, my favorite is Costco. I love Costco. And um, they have a great plain Greek yogurt there. Or uh, there's also other brands. But really make sure I talk about plain because when they add in flavorings, a lot of times they'll add in sugar just to make it taste better. Um, I do have some other recipes on how to use this. 
Like I'll use, I'll put some stevia in there, vanilla and cinnamon, mix it in and it tastes like frosting. Delicious. Um, and just eat that by itself. 23 grams of protein per cup though. Mm -hmm. So if you're like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to have for a snack. I'm, I'm not really sure. Well, you can make some little protein frosting um, with plain Greek yogurt and put some berries on top. Boom. High in protein, great snack. One cup of cottage cheese, so again, about 24 grams of protein. You will have to look again at, because different brands and types do have different amounts, but when you're finding one that's a good quality, it will have that much protein in it. Um, about two tablespoons of nut butter, so we're like peanut butter, about eight grams of protein, seven or eight grams, depending. Um, I just look at that as a way, like a challenge. Well, I'm going to eat, you know, a solid eight tablespoons then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to. It's just delicious. Um, but, you know, there is not quite as much protein in nut butter. If you're using it like a piece of peanut butter toast, yes, there's some protein there. But again, you're really not getting even 10 grams in a piece of peanut butter toast unless you're like layering that peanut butter on. So just something to think about. I will often take my peanut butter and actually mix in chocolate protein powder with my peanut butter to make it a lot higher in protein. And then I put that on apples or peanut or toast or whatnot. And there you go. That's another great high protein snack. And then about a half a cup of almonds is 15 grams of protein. So again, if you're really looking at getting that 20 grams, you know, have three quarter cup of almonds as a snack. And almonds are fantastic. I always have those in my purse for on the go when you really need a high protein snack. But this is a really easy way of meals and snacks and things to throw together just to make sure you're getting in that protein. You know, it is so important to really make sure that you're top loading your day with protein. I can't tell you how many women I chat with every day that once they start doing this, it changes everything. If you are stuck at a plateau and you're like, oh, you know, I've had some success with my, you know, weight loss or my health journey and I'm, I've just been stuck now for a couple of months or a few months, what do I do? Take your protein to another level. And this is a great way to do it. This is a great way to do it. Just really focusing on some of these foods a little bit more, boom, you'll bust past that plateau. If you're feeling like I'm fatigued, I really have a hard time um, getting the energy throughout the day and I'm just not making it work for me and I can't even get to the gym, I don't have energy. Start with your nutrition. You know, they talk about the 80-20, your health is your 80% nutrition, absolutely. But if you're feeling like you don't even have energy to get to the gym, here you go. This is going to help you within a few days. Seriously, and if, within a few days of increasing your protein, you will start getting more energy. So it's pretty amazing when you start doing this. So please let me know if you have any questions related to different types of protein, how to fit it in, where do you find it, what are the best ways to kind of piece it into your day. I will talk about protein pacing also um, at a different time, but this is just physically applying it to your day makes the biggest, biggest difference. So please let me know if you have questions and I will talk with you guys later.